Hello, my name is Kate Lamb. I'm a lecturer uh, academic at uh, the University of South Australia, located in Adelaide, um, Australia. My presentation is done on behalf of a research team at the University of South Australia, consisting of Dr. Jesse Childs, Sandy Marana and Brooke Osborne. The research was conducted with the um, assistance of the Australian Sonographers Association and particularly the CEO, uh, Jody Long. Historically, we know that there have been a lot of pandemics, but the one that we experienced in 2020 in the initial stages was different. We knew that it was different as we were seeing on our screens, the effects happening in Northern Italy and quickly with uh, information provided to us through organisations like ISHUOG, the International Society of Obstetrics and Gynaecology, we all began to worry. Um, our group decided that we should get ahead of the steam and start uh, conducting surveys uh, to see how our sonographer groups in Australia and New Zealand were doing during this particular time. This particular presentation provides you with a bit of a glimpse of how sonographers were travelling during the early stages of lockdown into the mid part of 2020. Before I continue, I just want to indicate that there were no conflicts of interest in relation to this presentation. So just let's refresh a little for context. Um, the announcements that changed everything for us on the 11th of February 2020, there were two announcements. The International Committee of Taxonomy of Viruses announced the name of a new virus, the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. This virus was genetically related to the coronavirus responsible for the SARS outbreak of 2003, but the two viruses were very different and the SARS outbreak in 2003 was responsible for only 774 deaths. The World Health Organization announced COVID-19 as a new disease. Then on March the 11th, 2020, it was declared a pandemic defined as a worldwide spread of a new disease over several countries or continents. The first reported cases of COVID-19 in Australia was in January 2020 and February in New Zealand, and both the Australian and New Zealand governments issued lockdown orders towards the end of March 2020. So what did this actually mean? Um, the lockdown as we know it saw the way that things were done in Australia change really everywhere. Um, from an imaging perspective, we saw a considerable drop in the total Medicare benefits or MBS um, scheme service number providers for diagnostic imaging services as seen in April and May 2020 with a 30% reduction seen in April and a 19% reduction in May. We can see within the non-hospital settings a 16 and 22% reduction in May, uh, April and May respectively uh, within the hospital settings. July 2020 saw both non-hospital and in-hospital figures return to pre-pandemic uh, levels. That's all in 2020. The effects of both the issuing of the pandemic, the lockdown, things were going to change quite a bit and our team decided to see what changes would occur relative to the sonographers in our cohort. We did this by conducting a series of surveys with a range of different questions that we could therefore track the effects of the pandemic lockdown on the well-being of these people on the front line in the sonographic community. So our team sat down and we talked about uh, how we should do this. What sort of information would we be interested in? What sort of information would everyone else be interested in? And what did we actually want to find out if we did conduct these surveys? We constructed a survey that we decided we would send out three times and then we would compare findings. Obviously, we had to reach out to somebody and that was reaching out to uh, Jody at the ASA. And we managed to get our first survey published and released on May the 8th, 2020. The first survey asked um, participants to reflect on the previous couple of months and provide responses as they could. 
and then we conducted a second survey in June where we sought to understand what, if anything, had changed between the lockdown and working in arrangements between, the, the, between March and May and then May to June. Survey 3 will be conducted and will round out our data collection to provide an overview how sonographers managed during this entire time. So our surveys created or generated a lot of data. And so from survey one, we've actually created three publications. Um, so from survey one only, we have paper one, what changes occurred in scan numbers and sonographer work hours. Paper two presents what the scanning protocol changes that may have occurred during the early stages of lockdown. And paper three looked at sonographer, and, uh, sonographer the profession, the uh, personal and social well-being. This provided us all qualitative stuff because as I said, there was an enormous amount of data that we received. So today's presentation was a comparison and a reflection of information that we uh, gleaned from the survey, survey one at the start of lockdown to survey two. We were looking to see what the effects of sonographer wellbeing was in the early months of the pandemic in 2020 in both Australia and New Zealand. And did some of those things change dramatically between the first survey uh, to the second? For background, the survey had been broken down into demographics to ascertain whether there were particular groups of sonographers who were more affected than others. From this slide, we can see the bulk of the responses fell in the 30 to 65 year age group of sonographers, with the bulk of responses coming from the 45 to 50 year age group. We also can note a great diversity of ages, including our early career sonographers, uh, as well as far more experienced sonographers at the other end of the age spectrum. The gender breakdown was a really interesting uh, area, as we can see, there is a large female cohort of sonographers. Having this sort of a breakdown would give us a really good way of comparing how male and female sonographers collectively managed their various roles that they had, including their career prospects during the um, pandemic. Responses came from varied groups, and this meant that we had a lot of data. So we wanted to thank everybody um, who provided this data. It was an excellent breakdown of the population of both Australia and New Zealand. We can see that there were a variety of ages and also gender. Uh, sonographers, sonographers were responding from both rural, remote, capital, metropolitan regions. Uh, collected responses from sonographers working in a variety of different environments including private practice, public hospital, private hospital, large private practice and small private practices uh, in all of those different locations. And there were varied clinical backgrounds um, from the sonographers who responded. The formation of the questions were based on the types of information we were trying to obtain. We sought to understand how people were feeling in their lives during this particular time. How were they feeling about their work? Did they feel safe? Were they worried for their patients? Were they worried for their co-workers? Were they worried about getting COVID-19? Did sonographers feel supported? What were their thoughts in relation to their family? And how supported were they in relation to stress relieving activities? And were there other general worries going on for the cohort? So in finding out how sonographers were actually doing, if we cast our minds back to early April 2020, uh, I think most of us were all in a bit of a state of shock. Uh, definitely in Australia we were. We were seeing long lines of people outside our uh, unemployment areas. Our politicians were offering daily press briefings on the, uh, the media, television and social media, radio, etc. We were hearing about um, government uh, grants being made available for people that were going to possibly be losing their jobs during shutdowns. Um, there was a general level of strain amongst the community. Were um, our roles as sonographers at risk? Would we see sonographers as well being on the unemployment lines? 
Uh, at the same time, there were many things to be consider considering in relation to stenographers and other healthcare workers uh, being on the front line. So here were some of the things we as researchers considered asking sonographers. Did they consider that their scanning position was at risk? Were they considering seeking alternate sources of income during this time? Did they think that they might catch COVID-19 whilst they were working? Were they feeling less or more stress at work? Were they feeling less or more safe at work, should I say? Um, were they feeling isolated? Did you have enough extracurricular activities to keep you busy and relieve stress? And so anxiety and stress were words that we all know and understand, but these were words that crept in more and more into our lives during this particular period of time. And the consequences of the WHO announcement were beginning to bite. And here we are going to look back at what the survey found between the first two surveys that we sent out to our cohort of sonographers. So let's have a look at some of the results that we received, starting with did sonographers feel supported by their employer? The data is significant from Survey 1 to Survey 2, with people feeling more supported from Survey 1 than they were in 2. If we look at this graph, look at the orange line, which is Survey 2, uh, we can see in the never area that this is actually lower than it was in Survey 1. So that means that there was an increase in the level of uh, feeling of supported by their employer by sonographers. If we see the two areas of improvement, there was a decrease in the never, as I said, but there was also an increase in the often supported compared to survey two. Did sonographers feel like they have supported le supportive leaders to approach with clarification or queries? Another interesting question, and the data showed a significant difference between the two surveys. The G-squared test demonstrated a significant difference um, and we see how the often and sometimes has increased on this particular survey with the never and rarely decreasing. This means sonographers felt more supported in the second survey than they did in the first. If we look to the graph, we can see a difference between survey one and two in the region of never and then go to the often area where we see an increase but then if we go to always, we see that is reversed and we see a slight decrease uh, in survey two. Did sonographers feel that their current scanning position was at risk? The two surveys were very different with the overall theme uh, being that people were feeling more secure in their employment from survey two. But let's think about that for a second. Allied health workers, sonographers were deemed uh, a group that is deemed in short supply in Australia in survey one, they were feeling that sometimes to always their roles may have been at risk. We cannot think of another time when this could possibly have been happening within the Australian um, area. On the graph, we can see how this was broken down. You can see the never change with sonographers feeling far less fearful for their roles in survey two than they were in survey one. There are still some though who felt a little worried. If we broke these surveys down just a little bit more, we could see where sonographers were mostly felt their scanning positions were at risk in survey one. And they were sonographers living in South Australia or New South Wales with 23 to 33%. And it was split between male and female in the 35 to 54 year age group. Those who never felt that their roles were at risk were mostly male sonographers across all states and territories and New Zealand, uh, but also in the 25 to 34 year age group and the over 55 year age group. Did you consider a different source of income? Statistically, this looks very similar. Survey 1, 55.4% 54, 54 of respondents never or rarely looked for an alternate source of income. And survey 2, this changed slightly to 59%. So well, whereas survey, um, the first survey, 21% of respondents were looking for alternate sources of income often and always, whereas that dropped down to 17% in survey two.
if we looked more closely at the data, this is how I read this data, that if you were a male under the age of 25 or a male over the age of 54, there was less of a chance that you were looking for alternate work. If you were aged between 25 and 54 years, female, working in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia or New Zealand, you were sometimes looking for alternate sources of um, income. So hopefully you can see there were many questions that we could ask of sonographers and this lockdown was adding some incredible complexities as well. There was school lockdown, there was non-access to aged care providers for visiting of parents, um, unemployment, a lot of working from home, um, educating your kids from home. We recognised that both anxiety and stress was now adding to an enormous issue. Um, how could we capture that information and reflect that uh, in the state-by-state -state approach from some of our colleagues? Were they, feeling, were they feeling safe going to work? Were they worried about catching COVID-19 at work? Was there anxiety in relation to the possibility of passing this on to um, your family because of work? And as a consequence, did this cause some sort of a disconnect with your family? Were sonographers feeling isolated? And how did sonographers deal with stress? So let's have a snapshot at some of the data that we received. Um, if we have a look at this particular question, did you feel safe going to work? And we can see that the graphs follow a fairly similar pattern. I want you to take note of the never section where we can see that there was an improvement in survey two with less people uh, feeling um, never safe than in survey one. And then go to the other uh, end where in the always section where we can actually see an improvement in the opposite direction, more people feeling always safer than in survey two as opposed to survey one. Statistically, there was a difference between those two surveys and people felt significantly safer in survey two. From the data, we could see that 60% of 18 to 24 year olds always felt safe. However, 6% was only a small number of individuals with the majority falling in the line. 58% of respondents always or often felt safe going to work in survey one compared to 72% in survey two. The who and the risk, if you were in Victoria or South Australia aged between 35 to 44 years, you were feeling um, somewhat at risk. Of this group, it was the females uh, sonographers who always felt at risk, with the majority of sonographers ranging from sometimes to never in that cohort. If you were male, younger, or in the 55 to 64 year age group in private practice, you indicated that you felt they felt very safe. And this was across all regions. Did sonographers feel anxious about contracting COVID-19 at work? Again, this was an interesting set of numbers, but we can see that the often number improved on this set of numbers. Um, sonographers were thinking about this, however, anxiety did change in the never column. Look at the blue curve. Whilst the numbers of never and rarely were low, they were still present, which was uh, pretty sad to see actually. But we can see how this improved in survey two. Again, who was anxious? We can see that this was pretty widespread from 25 to 54 years, mostly female sonographers, and this was across all states and territories. In relation to family, the trend was that people were anxious about family contracting COVID during their employment. This trend was not gender specific and it appeared across all age groups. It appeared people were more anxious in Australia and New Zealand at that time with sonographers both in private and public pra practice conscious about the, uh, the impact of their working arrangements on their family. We sought to understand whether there was a disconnect with families and friends and whether people were feeling connected with family and friends outside of work. And whilst there was a small number who indicated that yes, indeed, they were not connected, it appeared that most people uh, did maintain good connections with families and friends with the younger cohort of sonographers being the most social during the first part of the um, the survey conducted between survey one and survey two. This really highlighted the need to ensure that there was 
are social avenues for sonographers to maintain connections with families and friends during heightened times of stress. In relation to work-life balance, there's, there appeared to be a trend towards people coping less well, especially with um, those people who had uh, both work and then family commitments, including commitments with uh, younger children, with aged parents and other commitments that they may have. It was instructive, therefore, that more women were struggling with this aspect than men, and this appeared to be across the board in both public and private uh, arrangements. We tried to gain an understanding from sonographers if they were feeling isolated, particularly uh, in survey one. And we found that yes, sonographers were indicating that there were some that were feeling isolated and this was higher in the female cohort. Obviously, there are a higher number of females that were responding. Significantly, 5% of all respondees were always uh, indicating that there was some level of isolation. Um, as compared with the previous answer, younger sonographers appeared rarely isolated. From the perspective of outlets to relieve stress, there was no significant difference seen between either of the surveys. This was responded to well with 235 sonographers responding, um, considering the year, and whilst there was a small number who never had any social outlets, it appeared that sonographers were able to access enough social outlets to relieve stress through all of the age groups. Again, the young cohort of sonographers seem to always find uh, good ways to gain uh, engage in social outlets. Are you working on the front line? There was no significant differences between either of the surveys. Approximately 18% thought that, that they were working on the front line. Younger groups thought that they were always on the front line with 35 to 64 year age group indicating that they felt like they were sometimes. Again, um, it was the female cohort of sonographers who weighed highly in this regard. And it also seemed that in New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia in the public health system, sonographers felt that they were definitely on the front line. So how are we? How were the sonographers in Australia in the early parts of the pandemic in 2020? So if we can go cast our mind back to the scary moments of the lockdown in March 2020, sonographers like most other Australian and New Zealanders were extremely anxious with what was happening and more importantly with the level of stress that we could see around a great many things. From a well-being perspective, it is these surveys were really instructive as uh, people were starting to feel more supported by their employers from Survey 1 to Survey 2. There was a slight improvement in the delivery of information at work for all sonographers and significantly more people were feeling secure in their employment. There was a slight increase in the number of sonographers who felt that they were on the front line and finally people were becoming less anxious about catching COVID-19 at work from Survey, Survey 1 to Survey 2. This brings to an end of this presentation, which was just a, um, a snapshot of uh, information that we collected from two surveys conducted March um, and uh, May of 2020 in relation to sonographer wellbeing in Australia and New Zealand. We have recently conducted an another, uh, our final survey of which we hope to correlate uh, data and information to see how sonographers are um, are going uh, in the extend, this extended pandemic. We've published several articles um, in relation to the data that has been collected thus far. Uh, I draw your attention to those particular articles. I'll take this opportunity to thank my colleagues but, and the um, Australian Sonographers Association for their support with this research, but also a huge thank you to you. Thank you for listening uh, to this presentation. <laughs>